Okay, so today we are still talking about key features of a quadratic function. Um, so we can use it to help us solve problems. This one says the owner of a new dance studio is installing wooden floors in all of the dance rooms. How much did the owner expect to spend on flooring for a square room with 15 foot side lengths? So the first thing we want to do here is we want to write a function that can be used to determine the cost of the flooring. So I want price per feet squared of floor. And I'm going to times that by the area of the dance floor in feet squared. So then I want to, right, this is the formula. What was the price of the square foot? This one's in the picture. Mm -hmm. 8.75. And the area of the dance floor, if I'm writing a function, I don't want to put my number in yet. So I have, yeah. I have two side lengths, so it's going to be x squared. Okay, so the next part wants me to find the value of the function when x equals 15. So that means I'm going to be plugging in 15 for x into this function. So c of 15 equals 8.75 times 15 squared. Okay, so I want to go ahead and type this into my calculator. When I type it in, I'm just typing in the right side because the left side is telling me what I plugged into the equation. So I'm going to do 8.75 times 15 squared, which gets me 1968.75. So then I just need to go ahead and interpret this. So the cost for a new floor for a square dance floor with sides of 15 feet is $1,968.75. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is average rate of change. Guys, stop talking. So the average rate of change is found by taking the slope of a line through two given points on a graph. Remember, the slope formula is m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Okay. So b wants me to... Look at the average rates of change for f of x equals 0.75x squared and g of x equals 1.5x squared over the interval 2 to 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be plugging in 2 and 4 into both of my equations. So the first one I'm going to plug in 2 is f. I'm going to plug in 2. Mm -hmm. So when I plug it in, I get out 3. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for 4. Uh -huh. 
So my first coordinate point was 2, 3. I plugged in 2. I got out 3. My second coordinate point is 4, 12. I plugged in 4. I got out 12. So this is going to be my x sub 1, my y sub 1. And this one's going to be my x sub 2, my y sub 2. So I want to plug into my slope formula. So I'm going to have 12 minus 3 over 4 minus 2. And that's not going to simplify anymore without turning into a decimal, so I'm going to leave it like that. Then I want to go ahead and do the same thing for my g function. So I'm going to plug in 2 to my g function. And I'm going to do the same thing for 4. So that gets us... 24. So my coordinate points are 2 comma 6, because I plugged in 2, I got out 6, and then 4 comma 24, I plugged in 4 and got out 24. Okay, and then I want to plug into my slope, oh, first I want to label x1, y1, x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. Okay, so plugging in, that's going to be 24 minus 6 over 4 minus 2. So what is 24 minus 6? And 4 minus 2? Can I divide 18 by 2? What is it? 9. So... How are my rates of change different between the two functions? So I have 9 and 9 halves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the rate of change for g is twice as much the rate of change for function f. 